we continue to unlock engineers and this time we're looking at the Sarge. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Lee Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. We're going to unlock the Sarge today and this is actually the first level 3 engineer that we're going to unlock. Um, level 3 meaning that there are, he is the third level, third engineer in a chain, so there are two engineers before him. Um, so it's not because that he does anything better than the other engineers, he's just a little bit more difficult because you have to unlock two other engineers before you get to him. Now, the Sarge, he does um, grade 5 limpets, so that would be all the limpet controllers, collectors, hatchbreakers, prospectors, uh, I think all of them actually. And he also does um, grade 5 cannon upgrades, and uh, that's probably where you're going to unlock him if you need him. It's probably for the cannon upgrades, unless you have a very specific build where you want to lightweight your limpets, if you can even do that, I'm not sure. But anyway, okay, so we're going to have a look at the Sarge, and let's see what we need to do to, uh, to unlock him. There we have him. We can see, again, we have the three steps we need to go through. We need to learn about his existence, we need to get an invitation, and then we need to fulfill some kind of, of mission to actually um, unlock him and get access to the engineering facilities. And the last step we are going to go through, um, which is, of course, optional, that is to begin to um, to rank him up to, um, um, to a higher level. So, to unlock the Sarge, you need to have Yuri Ismark unlocked. And you need to do at least one grade 3 upgrade at Yuri Ismark. You don't have to apply it, you just have to roll on a grade 3. Um, and we already talked about Yuri Ismark, so I have a video on that. I'll put that in the more info icon up here. So you can go and you can watch that if you don't have the such, or if you don't have Yuri Ismark unlocked already. There's a full video guide on him. So assuming that you have him unlocked and that you have um, gotten the knowledge of the Sarge from Yuri Ismark. The next thing you need to do to unlock him is you need to, as you can see here, you need to reach the level of midshipman in the Federal Navy. And you can see your rank by going out here to your status panel and it will show in, let me get the right panel here. Here, it will show here in your reputation panel. You can see my current rank is Admiral, which is the highest rank. Now, midshipman is a fairly low rank. I think it goes, uh, let me see, it goes recruit, cadet, and then midshipman. So it's only the third rank. Um, so it should be fairly easy to do, but in case that you uh, that you haven't got that rank yet, what I suggest you do is you head out to Suthis and see us, which is way out here in the middle of nowhere. Um, and the reason why I suggest you go out out here is for two main reasons. Um, one of them is that there is a lot of Federation ranks uh, missions out here, and especially if you can take. Um, either passenger missions from um, from Sios into Sothis and into the Sothis atmospheric. Um, that's a very good way to do it. And you can, in terms of that, you can also take boom data delivery missions from Sothis to Sios, go back and forth with the boom data missions out here. Of course, that works only if they are in boom, but there will be other data missions if they're in other states. Um, but in general, I think this is a good place to go. And the added benefit for going out here is that this serious cooperation also has um, has a presence out here. That means you can you're gonna increase your rank with the serious cooperation. And the reason why that is interesting is because you're gonna need that later on to get the serious permit to unlock Marco Quint. Marco Quint is notorious for being one of the most difficult engineers to unlock. So if you haven't unlocked him already, it's just another good reason to get out to Southern and see us and run some missions out here until you reach the rank of midshipman. Um, and also, of course, help you towards lock unlocking that next engineer. Now, let me just get back, oh, not open the system map. There we go. So once, once you're out here and you begin to increase your rank, this is something that I could ask very often. Remember that even though you see my rank now says 100%, and that's of course I'm at the highest rank, so it can't go any higher. But it will go up to 100% for you, but you won't see your rank increase. It'll just stay there at 100%. That's because you will only rank up as soon as you get a... Um, and rank up missions, and they will often be called something like Federation, Navy, something, something, something. Probably something with Federation Navy in it in the beginning. Um, they have in the past been very difficult to find, and there's no real good place to go for these missions. So I would suggest you just head back to the bubble, find a um, 
find a federation system where you can begin to run some missions and eventually they will um they will pop up um, they have a tendency not to pop up out of these outskirts systems like southern and sea so go back to the bubble and remember this is a very important point even though you are at 100 percent you still collect points towards your next rank um so let's say that you are currently a recruit and you get up to 100 percent that means you're now ready to level up to cadet but you can still get points towards your midshipman rank. So I would really recommend that if you are out in Southern Seas or whenever you do your missions, keep doing them even though you hit 100%. And once you go and you get these ascension missions or naval promotion missions to rank up, you will um, you will probably get two of them, three of them in a row, all the ranks that you have. Okay, so that's enough about the ranks. Let's go, let's go back and... Um, oh, come on, there we go. Half broken holsters here. Here we go. Let's show it at the next thing. Next thing we have to do now that we have the midshipman rank, we actually get the invitation to come to his base. But we're not going to do that just yet because we need to deliver 50 units of a Baron Shield Pattern Analysis, which is data. And data is found in here. Um, you can see I have 25 of them already. Um, but we're going to go out and going to show you in a little bit before um, um, before we go to his base. We're going to go out and get these. But there are other things that, uh, that I also want to touch about. So um, let's actually do that now. If we're going to go into the uh, engineering shop, because you can just get all the stuff before you get here, which makes it a lot easier. Because once we unlocked him in, uh, in a bit and we have gotten those uh, Baron Shield Pattern Analysis, what I recommend you do is you go into the outfitting and you can, we have to do some upgrades, of course, because we have to level him up. And I recommend you do steady cannon mounts. Um, sturdy cannons because first of all there are plenty of cannons for sale out here I'm just gonna buy um, buy a cheap one here there we go so you're gonna buy a cheap cannon they are for sale at the station in all but the huge size so they should fit on any ship no we're not gonna set up firing groups once we go, go into the engineering shop we can then see we can actually go in and we can engineer this cannon and I again I recommend going and do the where is it? Sturdy, sturdy mount. Here we go. Because the materials for it is very easy to get. Now, if you ever have problems finding any um, engineering materials, I recommend you go and click um, ahead for the spreadsheet that I will get put both in the link in the description, but I'll probably try and put it in the, in the modify icon if I can do that. Um, I have a spreadsheet where I have listed all the engineering materials you're going to need for not only for unlock engineers, but also for doing your actual upgrades and where you can get them and how you can get them with instructional videos to most of them, okay? So if you ever have problems, go to that spreadsheet and and, and it should be, uh, be fairly straightforward from there. Okay, so let's look at what you're gonna need. For the first level, you're gonna have to do three upgrades of level one, that's three units of nickel. Nickel you can get by surface prospecting, pre surface prospecting pretty much any base. So go to EDDB or pretty much go around to any metallic planet and they will most likely have uh, nickel um, on the surface um, and you can of course do a detailed scan of the planet to see what materials are available and we can see here for the grade 2 we need more nickels now we are up to 6 units of nickel and 3 units of shield emitters shield emitters can be picked up either at Daps Hope or at the Nathan Tanger I'm going to try and put uh, links again to those videos up here and the more info icon and they are also in the spreadsheet if you're interested in, in going there and then the level three, we then need even more nickel, even more shield emitters. We're up to nine nickel and six shield emitters. And then tungsten, tungsten can get the same as nickel. It's also from the planet surfaces. Um, and I'm going to show you in a bit how you can fight the the planets that you that you need. And you can of course go on. I haven't unlocked him even further than this. Um, but you can go on. You can see what you need for the next one. You need more. You need more. You need sink now tungsten. And, and you can see what materials you need here if you want to unlock them all the way to level 5. So I recommend you get all the materials before you go here if you're planning to un unlock him all the way to, uh, to level 5. Okay, but, um, but let's go out and uh, let's start by getting those um, aberrant shield pattern analysis that we need to, uh, to actually unlock him. And then we're going to look at how we do the surface prospecting afterwards. So when we're looking for aberrant shield panel analysis, what you do is first you go into your galaxy map. I'm going to go over here to the uh, the star filtering tab. I'm going to make sure that we go to the state tab. 
and we're going to look for systems in, it's actually already set to that, systems in boom. So make sure you only have boom checked. And now we can see all the systems that are currently in boom. And then you just have to find a system which has a ring planet. Now this one luckily has, so that was pretty easy. You can see we have a ring planet, just going to check the distance here. 1,200 light seconds from the warpit, that's not too bad. So this would probably be a, a good start, because to get these... Let's just plot a route to that system, come on. To get these you need to scan um, you need to scan combat ships, you need to scan uh, ships that are engaged in combat. You can get them from other ships as well, but they seem to have a higher chance from those ships. And as the system being in boom also increases your chance. So let's go here and let's go to, uh, to the resource extraction site in the rings. You can of course also do this from conflict zones, I guess. Um, um, but I prefer to do it in these uh, resource extraction sites. So let's head out to the system and uh, I'll, you can join me once I'm close to the planet. So we are at the planet and I just dropped into one of the uh, local hazardous resource extraction site. And from here on it's pretty much just uh, targeting ships and waiting for the scan to complete. And then hope for the best. Of course make sure that you go in here and that you have room in your data storage because it would really be a shame flying around here for hours not having room in the data storage not getting anything um also i'm here in my exploration ship i have no weapons and very, very low shields but you don't really need it you can take a combat ship if you want to make a few credits along the way while you're out here anyway um but you can't do it in a um in the exploration ship and all you really have to do now is just scan the ships and uh, and then keep an eye on that info box and then hope for the best that one was an unexpected emission data, not what we're looking for. So we're just going to keep scanning the ships. And if you reach a point where you've scanned all of them, you can just board hop to, um, uh, to get a new set of ships so you can scan from the beginning again. And there we go. After a bit of scanning, we actually got two here. Remember that each time you get one successful scan, you actually get... Um, Three units, so that should give us uh, six units. So we go through our data here. We can now see that indeed we've gone from 25 to 31. So that's how you do that. And the final thing we need before we head over to um, to the engineer is, of course, to have a quick look at how that uh, service prospecting works. So what I normally do when it comes to service prospecting, looking for specific materials, I go over here to edtb.io and I go over here to buddies. And in here. Once the page loaders, there we go. Um, we could say here there's a material finder. Very, very useful. And let's see, what are we looking for? We're looking for nickel. We are looking for tungsten. And let's say that we're also looking for that one. And uh, was it sink? The other one, I think. So we can type in all the materials we need. And down here in reference systems, I would type the system that I'm currently in. Let's say that I'm in Sol. It could be any other system. I'm going to click Find Buddies. These type of queries can take some time, um, which is due to the way the underlying database is indexed, but um, just be patient, it will return eventually. And once you've got a result back, you can now see what planet in what system, and you can see the percentages of the different materials. You can see this one is actually pretty good when it comes to, uh, in, terms, in, in terms of percentages, but it's also... 8,000 light years away, so I might not want to go there. I could maybe even uh, order this by the reference system if uh, if I wanted to. So I order them so I get the ones closest to solve uh, first. So we now ordered it by reference system, and now it's just about scrolling down the page. Look, this one is actually pretty good. It's 10 light years away. Um, and see if you can find something that's see, this one is actually okay as well. So there are some decent systems out here, and you can go through those planets, um, and then you can begin to surface prospect. If you don't know how you find the, the rocks on the surface, I have a very basic, but though a tutorial on it, I'm going to link that in the more info icon. Um, so go ahead and have a look at that. Again, it is very basic. Uh, I really should do an updated version of it with a, that's a bit more advanced maybe. But just to get you started and just for surface prospecting like this, it's going to do, it's going to do you just fine. Um, but yeah, so once we have the materials, we can, uh, can now head back to the engineer. 
So once you got all the materials, you got all your, your shield pattern analysis and you got the materials you need to unlock and maybe even do the modifications that you need, um, you go in here to the engineering shop and you will see a box here. It's of course gone for me because I already unlocked him. But here you will be able to donate your um, your shield pattern analysis to, to him and once you have donated 50 of them, um, you will gain access to him. You might have to log out back in for everything to unlock properly. Um, there has been box with that in the past. I'm not sure if those has been fixed. But anyway, so once you've locked him and you have your materials, it's just engineer away. And that's pretty much it. Um, I really hope you found this video useful. If you did, give it a like down below and consider subscribing to the channel. And also next time, I'll see you guys in space.